Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are the family that believes that the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the most important things we could ever have in our lives. We are told over and over and over that we need to guard them and to obey them and to wrap them into our life and make them a part of our life and make them part of our world. And if we do that, then we build strong families and we build strong communities and we build the people of Yah. And the people of Yah are obedient people. And there's one common thing with every single religion that is out there, all 40 kabillion thousand of them, there's 40,000 plus, there's one thing. They all have this one attribute. They're all lawless. Every single one of them do not care about the laws, statutes, and commandments. So you have an entire religion base that is lawless, that goes contrary to what scriptures tells us to do. So we are the people that are always trying to encourage everybody to read your scriptures, to to find our creator where he's able to be found, and to... Um, Seek him where he's able to be found. Now, what you're looking at right here is you're looking at Yah scriptures. This is a 1.4 million word. It is uh, about a little over two inches, a uh, little like two and a half, I think, two and a half inches thick. Um, it is 3,153 words or 3,153 pages. It is the normal 66 book version that everyone is used to, as well as the uh, hidden apocrypha that has all been fully restored. The name of our creator, the name of his son, they are all back there. Now, at, before we go into the Second Kings, I wanted to show you guys another download that I got here, which is even more hard to follow, and it might actually be a little blurry too, so sorry about that. Um, and it is, does this look blurry to you guys? Anyone? Look over here, does this look funky? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Is right. it the orange is Jack, maybe? It's I like think, throwing it into things. I think it's beautiful. All right, so here we are. These are um, the kings and the prophets of Yisrael, and we have, it starts off at the top here, we have Saul. And we had the prophet of Samuel. And then during the days of David and Solomon, we had Nathan, the prophet. And then as we had um, Jeroboam, we had, these are the prophets. And these are actually hard to see. We have ah Ahijah. Um, and I, some of these are actually some of the right spellings. It's Shimia. the yellow and white. It's is the, it yellow and white? Is that what's doing it? It's hard. It's just, yeah. Is it some graphic design nightmare? You don't put yellow and white like that. Okay, yeah. So anyway, it's just uh, whoever did this design, <laughs> thank you, but... Maybe some different colors. So anyway, this is where we're at right here, guys. And so we are down to, right now, we are in, Ahab just died. He is gone. He is dead. And we are, so we are right here. We are in the day, we are in the ending of Elijah and the beginning of Elisha. And so we also have Yoel, Joel, on the other side of the kingdom. Okay, now, let's for anybody who has not... Um, Followed where we're at, Jade. Can you please follow us up? Give us a, a quick breakdown of uh, what's happening. Uh, last chapter, um, the kings had died. Moab came up against the people. Elijah gave a um, said that the king was going to die. He didn't like it. He um, told uh, the people to go find Elijah on the mountain, and they said, "Come down." He said, "Fire be upon you." He killed them all, and then uh, two armies of fifty. They killed him. The third guy, he had respect and asked him. He's like, "Will you please come with us? Please do not kill me." He's like, uh, I know that you're a man of Elohim, so don't kill me. So he didn't kill anyone. Yahoo told him to go with him. He went with him and told him that uh, he was going to die, and they didn't like the prophecy and stuff like that. So Yeah, and so I, I wanted to point out something. I didn't get it popped up here in time, but um, we had a, uh, a brother or sister over on, I can't remember what even what channel it is. I'm getting old. Sorry, everybody. But they were talking about um, in Luke when the uh, when Messiah was out with his um, Talmudian when, and they, they said, shall we call down fire at, like Elijah did? Do you guys remember that yep, particular that, part? Yeah, that was when the town didn't accept them. Yeah, okay. Do you remember what Messiah said? Uh, like, uh, do you not understand or something like that? Like, there was something in particular, like, are you not understanding? Like, these aren't... Like no, 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 close. Close. He says, um, that was a different spirit is what he said in that. Um, and so... It, I, it's it's interesting that um, th that what he said is is it's it's of a different spirit, I, and I don't know exactly what that means, but um, I think we were probably joking about it. You know, the power of having fire come down and things of that nature. Um, but it is of you know, as Messiah said, a different spirit, and these are things that we probably won't exactly understand uh, until we have our Messiah, until we have those who are. Um, on the other side, who can tell us exactly what this stuff means? But for now, um, anyone have anything before we roll? 
Um, no. Okay, Second Kings 2, 1. And it came to be when Yahuwah was to take up Eliyahu to the Shimeim by a whirlwind. The Eliyahu went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Eliyahu said to Elisha, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Beth El. And Elisha said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they went down to Beth El. And the sons of the Nebian who were at Beth El came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that Yahuwah is taking away your master from your head? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Eliyahu said to him, Elisha, please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Jericho. And he said, As Yahuwah lives and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they came to Jericho. Okay, what's happening here? Um, so he's, uh, they know that El Elijah is going to be um, taken to heaven. Wherever it goes. Yeah, and so what, what's what's uh, why does Elijah keep chasing uh, Elisha away? Uh, because he doesn't want him to be near when he leaves. Uh, yeah. Don't want him to be sad. Don't want him to sit there and have to chase yeah. after him. What is what is what does Elisha keep saying on this whole thing? Be silent. I know he's going. Be silent. When, and what else? When when Elijah's telling him, or you know, Eliyahu is telling him that um, remain here. What does he keep saying over and over? Elisha. Yeah, Yahuwah sent me on to somewhere else. He says, as, as Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. Is anyone following along this yeah. morning? Okay, nobody caught that. I do not leave you. He said this over and over, right? I do not leave you. Um, he, he doesn't want to leave his master. Do you guys see this? He, his master, is, he doesn't want to lose his master. Okay, all right, wake up, folks. Okay, and the sons of the Nebium, who were at Jericho, came to Elisha. Am I at five? Yeah, I think so. It came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that Yahuwah has taken away your master from over you today? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Eliyahu said to him, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to the Yardin. And he said, As Yahuwah lives and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the Nebian went and stood facing them at, the, at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Yardin. And Eliyahu took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them passed over on dry ground. And it came to be when they had passed over that Eliyahu said to Elisha, Ask what I am to do for you, and before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be on me. Now, this is one of these, um, these are, uh, you have an opportunity to... Uh, choose the right path, right? Uh, you know, he, he has a, a, a shot at a final, um, what do you want me to do for you? And his answer is, is something that is, you know, amazing. Double portion of your spirit be upon me, which is uh, what kind of spirit would be upon Elijah? Spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy, spirit of Yah, right? This, the, the, the Ruach HaKadosh would be up in him. And I mean, he would just be, um, he'd be one with Yah in, in many, many ways. Okay, 10. And he said, you have made it hard to ask. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it is yours. But if not, it is not. Okay. Um, why do you think he said this? Or you have made it hard to ask. So is that what he said? Was that really hard? Yeah, maybe because maybe he can't, he, maybe he can't give that. Maybe it's not his power maybe, to give Maybe that. that is right. Yeah, maybe that is something that he could not do. So um, yeah, that, that is one of those hard asks. And it came to be, as they continued on and spoke, that see a chariot of fire with horses of fire, that, which separated the two of them. And Eliyahu went up by a whirlwind into the Shimeim. What do you think that looked like? Do you think it had like, uh, there, there's horses. Do you think the horses were making sounds? It was like a... I don't know. I don't, think, I don't, I don't, think, do I don't know if there'd be sounds and they would run through air. I don't know. You don't know? Or like neighing or something like that? Like, uh, you know. I don't know. I think there were loud sounds. A lot of people would see it. Do you think these horses breathed fire? The, the horses are a fire. They're only fire. Yeah, so the horses are fire. Being. I mean, it's like, what are these things? Okay. All right. 12. And Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Yisrael and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own garments and tore them in, into two pieces. And he took the mantle of, that, of Eliyahu that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Yardim. And he took the mantle of Eliyahu that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is Yahuwah, Elohim of Eliyahu? And he struck the water, and it was divided this way and that. And Elisha passed over. Now, was Yahuwah in the mantle, or was Yahuwah with uh, Elisha? I mean, who, who's really, I mean, because he's like, where are you? 
Eli- Elohim of, of Eliyahu, right? He, and he's, he's like, he's a mantle. So I think he's taking like his cl- his cloak or something, I think is what it is. Yeah, maybe it's a staff, maybe. A mantle, a staff or something like that. But he like, he, you know, he uses that. So is the power in him or is the power in the in his staff? I would say the power is with him. I'd say Yah is with him. I don't think anything he has has the power like that. What do you think would happen if he had hit that water and nothing happened? Oh, he'd probably be real disappointed. He'd probably have lost a lot of faith there. It'd been over, right? How, where, where would he go from there? All of a sudden, all his his master was gone, and he'd lost any kind of power that he had. Okay, fifteen. And when the sons of the Nebian who were from Jericho saw him, they said, "The spirit of Eliyahu rests on Elisha," and they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Why do you, why do you think that they they saw this? How did, what is he glowing? You think he's glowing like Moshe? Or why why did these guys say the spirit of Eliyahu rests on Elisha? What maybe they could tell he was different, or maybe he's like prophesying like he was prophesying. Something was different with him. Something was different. And they said to him, "Look, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master. Let the ruach of Yahu, lest the ruach of Yahuwah has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or in some valley." And he said, "Send no one." But they pressed upon him till he was ashamed. And he said, send. So they sent 50 men and they searched for three days, but they did not find him. He's just not going to tell them he's going to let them go. And yeah, well, why do you think he was ashamed? What did they say? Like, uh, this guy is up on a mountain. Now you've left your master on the mountain to die. He's starving to death and you, we still can't go out and search. Um, whatever they said, he was ashamed. Okay, 18. And they returned to him for he remained in Jericho. And he said to them, did I not say to you, do not go? And the men of the city said to Elisha, look, the sight of, the, of this city is good, as my master sees, but the waters are spoiled and the land barren. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. And they brought it to him. And he went out to the source of the water and threw salt in there and said, thus said Yahuwah, I have healed this water. No longer shall death or barrenness come from it. And the waters were healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. And he went up from there to Bethel. And as he was going up the way, some youths came from the city and mocked him and said up to him, said to him, go up, bald head, go up, bald head. And he turned around and looked at them and pronounced a curse on them in the name of Yahuwah. And two female bears came out of the forest and tore to pieces the 42 of the youths. And from there, he went to Mount Carmel. And from there, he returned to Shomeron. I think he's a bit too sensitive on that. I don't know. Do you, we, we, should probably, we should probably talk about this. Um... This is probably something we should, you know, we should, number one, we should be aware that um, if something like this happened by a, by, if you curse somebody in the name of Yahuwah, um, who knows, especially if you are, if you are a person of Yah and you are, you do something of this nature, uh, imagine this. So you have two female bears. Um, so why do you think it's two kids? Why do you think it's two female bears? Uh, lost child. Yeah. They're probably, probably angry looking for their child or something. Yeah. The bear cubs probably just both disappeared. Angry mother's really angry. Um, 42 kids. Now, that's a lot of kids. Now, how do you think that's possible? Do you don't think these kids ran away? I don't know. Bears, like, come by surprise. And, like, 42 fast. of them, though? I don't, I don't, how fast is a bear? Bear's pretty fast. The yeah. bear can really chug his big Yeah, but taking, taking out 42 is crazy. They must have been out in the middle of nowhere or something. Or something that they couldn't have run. Because um, <clears throat> the first thing you do, you see a couple bears coming, you're probably going to run for your life. Uh, maybe it was dark. Maybe it was darkness or something, and they couldn't see the bears, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the bears got them. Yeah, or or maybe the curse like made them so they like got they had to get eaten by the bears. They couldn't move. Like in a sli- like in your sleep when you try to run in your sleep and you, you can't, can't move, run. Yeah. You're like in the in the bog, and you just like can't make it very far. Yeah, something happened. You know, you don't want to be on the receiving end of Yah's curses, no matter what it is. Um, I do believe these situations happen. I do believe this went down. I think um, Lee showed a little too overboard. Yeah, you think he went he went crazy? I think he's a little... What's up with the bald head? Nobody likes a bald head? Yeah, dude. Was he just having a bad day? Yeah, man, he needs to calm down. Maybe he had sunburn. He was upset about the bald head at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, that's it, everyone. Thank you very much for our reading. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. I have no idea when we'll get to see you guys next, but much love till then. We are out. All, All right, right, shalom. shalom.